Hello everyone, my name is Michelle Campos. I'm a senior solution consultant here with ServiceNow, specializing in IT asset management. In this short video, I'll be covering some SaaS reporting along with different integration methods that can be used to bring the data in from third-party vendors, ultimately allowing you to manage the subscriptions efficiently and help reduce costs. Now that I've logged into the platform, what you can see is we are on the landing page of the SaaS overview workspaces. In this is a lot of reporting that I said we would kind of talk about. So being able to understand the spend, uh, your total spend, some potential savings, understanding what's coming down the pipeline around true up costs, and even being able to understand who's your biggest spenders within your company. So a lot of great information, but ultimately, how do we get this information into ServiceNow so that it can digest it and help give us those potential savings and true up costs? So there's different ways to do integrations, and we're going to talk about a few today. Um, one of the ways to be able to do an integration is direct integration. So these are the strongest integrations that we have. It's going to bring in the most detailed information that we can around these different vendors and products that we have. So um, this is recommended step one. If, if you see a vendor on here, we're going to recommend that you use this direct connection. Second option is single sign-on. So if you have Azure or Okta um, and you have single sign-on in your environment, we can bring in that integration um, and then bring in those SaaS products uh, to, again, be able to capture the information in one platform to help you make decisions quickly and efficiently. The last option is a custom integration. So if they have an open API, then we can connect to that open API, again, bringing in that data that, that's important to be able to make uh, effective uh, decisions. So we're going to talk about direct first direct integration. So here we talked about what um, you know some of those vendors are that we can integrate with. In this example, I'll pick Salesforce. We're going to go ahead and click continue, and what it's going to do is bring up a playbook um, for being able to take step by step instructions on how to do that integration. So in this case, there's four different sections. This section is specific to uh, Salesforce and what needs to happen within that admin portal of Salesforce. So um, as you've gone through, you'll continue to mark it complete and it's going to continue down um, these profiles, or excuse me, continue down um, each section. Um, ultimately, to you get to the final where you review and publish. Uh, so again, giving you detailed instructions uh, another way to get even more further instructions is being able to come here and use full documentation and look um, at some of the troubleshooting if you were to run into any troubleshooting issues. Um, so I've gone ahead and taken, due to the time, gone ahead and taken the liberty of, of doing a connection prior to this, this video. One thing that happens whenever you create that integration after you click review and publish is it'll either create a software model or it will associate to a software model if you already have one created. So um, you can go ahead and, and make that association. Uh, where that becomes important is now that software model is going to tie it to your entitlements and um, be able to show you your compliance stance, understanding what's being used versus what's not being used. Um, additionally, it's going to create a reclaim rule. So in this case, we've gone ahead, it went ahead and automatically created a reclaim rule and let's take a look at it. So it's gone ahead and created a reclaim rule based on the activity threshold, 30 days. So if they haven't used the product in the last 30 days, it's going to create the reclaim task, um, ultimately allowing you to take actions on those tasks. And we'll talk about those different actions that you can do. But um, what we do recommend is coming in and looking at these reclaim rules once it's been created to make sure that it fits your needs in your environment. So you can always come in and adjust this. So maybe you don't want it, maybe um, instead of uh, activity less than 30, you know, 30 days, then you, you want to do it to 90. So coming in and making sure that it fits your needs um, is important. So now that we've got the software model created, which we're looking at now, and that reclaim, what other information are we getting in and how can we start putting those actions behind it? So we'll take a look at this software model. Here I talked about being able to tie those entitlements back to um, the information. So how, much, how many rights have you purchased um, from your third-party vendor? 
Uh, being able to see if you're compliant or not um, with their agreement based on the number of users. Uh, and then this is the information that's coming in from that integration. So your, your, vendor, your, excuse me, your employees that have subscriptions along with that last activity date. And that last activity date is what's driving your reclaim candidates. So now I can see, okay, I have 572 reclaim candidates based on that reclaim. So they haven't used a product in less than 30, or excuse me, haven't used a product in the last 30 days. Different ways to be able to take action. So you can come in and you could maybe just select one that's ready um, and be able to go in and reclaim one. You can reclaim all. Or even as you mature over time, you can go through the process and have this automatically reclaim them. So no actions needed to be taken on the user side or on the, um, on the software admin side, right? So being able to, to ultimately reclaim those and put them back into a pool. And then the last option, so that's, that's what it looks like to do a direct integration. The second option we'll cover in this video um, is talking about doing the integration with single sign-on. So here you're able to come into the single sign-on integration profile. You could come in and create new, um, and ultimately it's going to have you select and go through the steps of setting those up. I've gone ahead and set one up, so let's take a look at it real quick. So we'll take a look at Okta. I've gone through um, and gotten my tokens, gone through and, and done the connection, and now I can see all of the SSO profiles that um, are there. I can see all of my directory users, directory groups, and a lot of um, additional information. But here I can start seeing what has a direct integration. So like this one is Coupa, it doesn't. So I could come in here and maybe I wanna do a connect, right? So in this case, um, Coupa is already connected. So let's take a look at one maybe that hasn't been connected. So we can look at Mural. Mural hasn't been connected. So I can come in here, adjust this date. Maybe I wanna understand what has, um, you know, the information from uh, last month and, and so, so forth. And then I click connect and it'll go through the process of connecting and bringing that information in. So this is the second option that we discussed. I really appreciate everyone's time uh, being able to run through, see some of the reporting and then ultimately seeing how we can get that information into service now, uh, making you successful in being able to manage your, your SaaS licenses efficiently um, and ultimately being able to help drive some of that savings behind it. If you have any further questions or need a deeper dive, please reach out to your account executive uh, and we'd be happy to assist with that.